What's up guys? Big Boss Billy here. Now I've been playing some Civ 6 and I've noticed that in the early game I often find myself wondering whether I should go with the urban planning policy with plus one production in all my cities or the Ilkum policy plus 30% production towards builders. So as you can imagine this depends on a lot of things. Obviously it depends on the number of cities you have. The more cities you have the more urban planning is going to be beneficial. Dep depends on how many cities are you going to use to build builders. Or, likewise, are you going to build a single builder in your capital? Or are you going to build one builder and follow it up with another, another builder? It also depends on once you choose this policy, how many more turns do you have to wait before your next civic is complete and you can change policies again. For example, suppose you choose the 30% towards builders. You finish your builder in like four turns, but you still have 15 more turns before you get to change your policy back to the plus one production in every city. On that note, the game speed matters. On a quick game, you're going to get to that next civic much faster and have that opportunity to change policies again. On the other hand, and this one's a little more subtle, the production cost of your builders and everything else is reduced. Instead of spending 50 production for a builder, you only have to spend 33. That means that the plus one production that you get from the urban planning policy is a much bigger fraction of the amount of production you need and the number of turns you need to buy anything. So game speed leads you in both directions. So obviously there's a lot of math here and I figured I'd run some of, some of the math, I'd make some graphs and show them to you guys. All right, so let's look at the simplest graph first. This graph has a zero if both of those policies are gonna be exactly the same. It doesn't matter which one you pick because they both give you the same amount of production. Above the zero line depicts a point where picking the policy with 30% production towards builders is beneficial. This is the amount of production per turn net that it's worth. So if you're right here, picking the 30% towards builders policy is worth two production per turn over and above the other policy, plus one production in each city. So what do we have here? Let's suppose we have a single city and we're producing a builder the entire time we have this policy active. And that's what we're trying to decide. Obviously, if we're producing a builder the whole time, the 30% production towards builders is going to be the best, no matter what. And that's why this line is always above the zero line. It doesn't matter what your civilization production is. And the more your production is, suppose you have a very productive city, you've got a lot of great production tiles, you've got 20 production in your city. That 30% production is a much larger modifier. 30% of 20 is much higher than 30% of 6. So the more production you have, the more it tilts you towards choosing that policy. However, this assumes you're building a builder the entire time you have that policy active. Now let's suppose you have three cities all producing builders 24 seven the whole time. Let's assume you have a total of 10 production split up over those three cities. You can see why this is the break even point. If you get plus 30% towards builders, that's exactly the same as the plus three production you would get with the other policy, plus one in each city. So that's why the break even point for three cities is right there when you have 10 production. If across those three cities, you only have nine production, you'd actually rather take the plus three production from urban planning than the plus 30% production from the other policy. Now, this is just a hypothetical situation where you're producing a builder 24 seven in every city before you switch policies. Now that's never gonna happen. Often you're gonna produce a builder in one city or two cities and then switch to something else, you know, a granary or a, a district until you complete your next civic and you can switch policies. So let's assume we have a single city on standard speed. This is the same graph here. Above the zero line means we have a benefit towards the policy that gives you 30% production towards builders. We can vary your production, but let's assume we have 10 turns until we change policies. What we see here is it's actually a flat line. The more production you have, the more the 30% bonus is worth, but it also means you finish your worker faster and then you have to go back to producing something else, say a monument, and now you're missing that plus one production per city that you could have with the other policy. So you got this equilibrium built up. And in fact, we see here that it evens out almost perfectly. It doesn't matter what your city production is. If you're only gonna produce one builder in the city, of course, 
we see across this range, it's always better to choose the 30% towards builders policy. Now, what if we vary the amount of turns we have remaining before we get to change our policy again? This has a bigger effect on which policy is better. As you can imagine, if you only have five turns left and, and this decision you make only forces you down this road for only five turns, then it's very good to choose the 30% towards builders policy. Because at the end of that, you don't have very many wasted turns where you're going to be producing something else without the plus one for every city bonus. But if you have 13 turns before you get to pick your policy again and say you're only going to be building your, your builder, in this case, for five of those turns, now you've got those eight turns where you're missing out on that extra production. And now the break even actually switches the other way. Now you're better to just pick the plus one production in every city, even though you only have a single city, than picking the 30% towards builders. Now let's look at how this changes if we're doing it on quick speed. On quick speed, again, the amount of production your city has doesn't really matter. However, we do see a slight shift in the trend on number of turns till you get to pick your next civic. The break even point moved from 12 down to nine. 12, nine, when you go down to quick speed. But that's as to be expected. The number of turns you have remaining till your next civic is gonna be less because you're on quick and those civics come faster anyways. So again, the overall thing to remember here doesn't really change. If you have an exceptionally long time before switching civics, you might want to pick the plus one production for every city. If you have a very short time, and you only, even though you only need to build one builder, go for the 30% production towards builders. All right, let's go back to standard speed. Now let's assume we've got two cities, and we're only going to build a builder, single builder in our capital. As you can see here, the break-even point shifts way down. Now that plus one production in all cities isn't worth one production per turn, it's worth two production per turn. Likewise, when we look at this graph, which shows the break-even point based on the number of turns remaining before you change policies again, the break-even point shifts way, 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 way down to six turns. And this is intuitive. If you have two cities, you're more likely going to want to take the policy that gives you plus one production towards every city. However, in this case, you would often not be building just one builder in your capital. You'd probably be building two builders, maybe one in your capital and one in your second city. This shifts the break-even point back. Let's assume that that second city isn't just working on something else. You're actually building two builders, one in your capital and one in your second city. Now, the break-even point shifts back. Again, assuming you have 10 turns towards your next civic, the break-even point is slightly around 0.5. If we change the number of turns until our next civic, we can see the break-even point goes back all the way up to 12. So for any time under 12, it's better to pick the 30% towards builders. And that makes sense. We're building a builder in both of our cities. And finally, don't forget that you can always pay to change your policies. This is a quick game right now. It only costs me 35 gold to change my policies out of turn. That's not very much. So I know you're not going to keep this all in your head. So here's all you need to remember. Assuming you're only going to build one single builder, it's still best to take the 30% towards builders policy. Assuming you have less than 11 or 12 turns until your next policy change. Anything you change, if you're going to build those builders in two cities, if you're going to build two builders in your capital, you know, you're going to build one and then finish another, that only shifts it even more towards the direction of taking the 30% production towards builder's policy, especially given the fact that even if you have a long time to change, you can just pay 30 freaking gold to switch policies mid-civic anyways.